All right, so um, I didn't play the sound yet on this video. Let me play it for a moment just to get a sense of what it is. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is the show where I review something cool every Tuesday. This week what I've got for you is the Motorola G5. This is a great smartphone with very powerful features. So let's check it out. Okay, so um, it's got some sound and the idea then, you know, when you fast forward, you rewind, you hear it. But the idea is that uh, there's like a part over here where I'm speaking and then uh, there's silence. So I probably want to remove that as well. Now, when you get adept at using some of the software, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts because instead of doing the little, uh, the little scissors here and then right click and close gap, uh, there's going to be keyboard shortcuts, and those often show up, for example, here on the play button. This says play, pause, toggle, space. Well, that's saying if you use the space bar, Verizon, you can pause and play with the space bar and more. Um, there's a bunch of items in the menu, like, you know, edit and all of that. Undo is a keyboard shortcut, control Z, delete and close gap, backspace. So without having to go to the right click, close, delete and close gap, I can press backspace on the keyboard. So this is an example. Um, this is some weird thing all about my own recorder. But you may notice that the voice is actually not synchronized. This phone is highly recommended because it has all of the features that you need uh, to run your business. So that's, that's a bug that I've seen on my own video. So um, the thing is that this is a little too advanced and I want to get into, but you've got a video track and an audio track. You can move them around to fully synchronize them. Let me show you briefly, but I won't get into it too deeply because not everyone will have this issue. Uh, let me show it quickly, then I'll show the details. I can unlink the audio and video, and then now I've got a video track separate from an audio track. So then I can match them up. That's still wrong, but the idea is I can move this around to synchronize it better with my voice. Now that's happening because right now both of these are linked together. They're one track. It's blue. And if you do a right click, you don't have to do this, but if you do a right click, you'll have unlink audio and video. So now at that point, I have a separate video track and I have a separate audio track. So then the trick, of course, is to move these enough so that they line up with my visuals and my audio. We're not going to do that. We're not going to worry about that. It's just that in my case, the way I recorded it, mine has that bug that I would have to fix. So I'm just going to undo that. So let's say that the audio is fine, but there's all of this part here that's empty. So I want to remove that empty part. Now, just because I see it that here there's nothing doesn't mean I'm going to cut it here and cut it here and delete. No, I'm going to actually look at if the visuals make sense and then make my cuts and then make my delete. So here's a, an example where I might zoom in somewhat. So this amount of time right here, you know, if I drag the playhead at a certain point, my mouth stops moving and then I show the, the product for a moment and then I pause there thinking of what to say. So I need to find the part of where I'm going to cut it. So probably right here. Whatever time that is, in my case, it's 1 minute, 3 seconds, 27 milliseconds, or 27 fractions. I can then clip it there, or split it there, and then I go forward, and then I start to talk again over here, somewhere here, so I might split it there. So that part right there in the middle, I don't want anymore. I stopped for a moment, that was approximately 1 second that I could remove. And then, like I said, you can do the right click, delete and close gap, or you saw up in the menu that it's the same as pressing backspace on the keyboard. Now, of course, you need to have the right thing selected. If I've got that selected and press backspace, it'll delete the rest of my video. And it shows what's selected because it's highlighted. So if I want the part in between, I select that and I press backspace, and that cut it, it that deleted it, it removed the empty gap, and it brought it together. If I only did a plain old delete, well, I've got an empty gap where it's going to show me here, and then it's going to go black for a moment, for some reason, and then it comes back. This phone is highly recommended. 
So what I wanted there was to delete and close gap. So now what we've got is this. Horizon and more. So I pause here. This phone is highly recommended. And then it continues. Instead of that wasted time where I'm trying to figure out what to say, I cut out that part. So you find the place in the timeline where you want to start the cut, and then you click the little cut. You go to the place where you want to stop the cut, click right there. So now in between, I've got a part I don't want. Right click, delete, and close gap. And I cut it. This phone is highly recommended because... So I'm going to mute the volume for a moment, but um, I don't think there were many places Hello in the video where I needed to do users. that, but I'm let's say I misspoke, this is the show where I, review something I didn't, cool uh, I, I said the wrong something. thing. This is the example where then I would be Motorola zoomed into the to the video. This is a great smart and find the part where I said something features. and so then check split it, it. So let's say I want it from here to here. Split, delete it. Hola, G five. The case now the problem. Is a... Perhaps you see visually that there's a jump. G five. I've got my phone in my hand up here for this moment, and then suddenly I've got it over here. That may or may not be something to, to worry about. Uh, I think what I see beginners really, really worry about is that I'm, I'm, I'm at a certain position in one moment and suddenly I'm at another. That might not be a bad thing. Um, that's going to happen <coughs> all the time that when you make these cuts, you is the things are not going to line G5. up. Even the, you know, the best actors a, aluminum are not going to be able to avoid that because Motorola the editor, the person G5. editing the video, is ultimately deciding I want to show this, then show that. Aluminum. So when I play it with that big cut, you is the Motorola G5. The case. So then it skips over there. Uh, we do have the ability to do a transition. We can blend one shot into another shot, but again, that's too much about y you're worrying for something that is not a problem. You see this in, in any kinds of videos, tutorials, and stuff that you watch. There is a jump from here to here, and, and that's normal. Uh, the only time that it's all completely smooth always is when they recorded something and someone was able to do everything perfectly with one try. And most of us are not going to be able to accomplish that, so it's fine. But if you wanted to use a transition, for example, I'm going to blend from that shot to this shot. You, you select one of these transitions. Uh, cross dissolve is usually the one you want. And you click it and you drag it in between the two clips. You see what happens here is between the two clips, there will be a one second animation from one visual thing to another. So I click done. Now, when I play it, that for you is the Motorola G5. The case it, it does that. Again, it doesn't perfectly synchronize it, but maybe you like that better than before. So playing that again. The Motorola G5. The case is a. So it shows that there's a transition in between. From this clip into this clip, there's a transition. G5. The case. Yeah, but honestly, you really only need two. All those other ones about a star wipe and like fireworks and all of that, it's like that catches your attention, but it's, I honestly think some of them are like not that professional. But looking at the transitions, yeah, there doesn't seem to be a lot here, but they're actually hidden over here. I'm currently looking at the dissolve group of transitions. Clicking here, you've got some other ones too. So here's slides. Clicking here, and then I have this example where this one slides into that. But I, I really think, for most of us, 
the only ones that matter are the ones in the dissolve. Cross dissolve is the main one people will do. Dip to white, dip to black. Mm -hmm. So this first row, I would say, usually are the only ones you really need. Everything else, I think, is too over the top. But they're there for you, and it's a possibility. So just to play with a different one, I'm going to try, what does it look like when I do a stretch? I'm going to do stretch in. So here's a stretch in. The Motorola G5. The case is a G5. The case is a... It catches your attention, but um, I don't know. Let's see what else. Page peel. This one's cool. It's like I'm tearing through the screen. Corolla G5. The case... Five. The case is... Okay, so I'm just going to go with a basic one. Uh, but this is a cool way to uh, additive dissolve is kind of all right too. But this is a way to uh, blend from one thing to another. Uh, but again, it, it's not even necessary. Depending on your style, this this kind of cut right here from here to here, that's not a mistake. That's not wrong. That's just something changed. You don't have to like smooth it over with a transition. Not necessary. But it's, it's a way to uh, try to blend one to another. Hola, G5. Uh, just for what it's worth, the somebody had suggested to me to watch commercials on TV with sound off. Mm -hmm. Then you can get a better understanding of how long the clips are, how the transitions work, how they go from one theme to the next. Like, when you have that split open, mm -hmm. that might be good if you're changing the subject in your split, in your in your image, mm -hmm. whereas the cross dissolve is perfect here, where you have a continuous theme that's going through and the cross dissolve works. But watching commercials with the sound off is really, uh, is really educational. You'd be surprised how many clips they put in 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, I believe we offer classes in video that are longer than, than us because we're only going to spend one day. But if people are interested in more video editing, we offer classes here. I, I don't teach those, uh, but you can check in the office, front office, about when those are offered. Because video is its own thing. It's its own lucrative position. It's its own lucrative job uh, <coughs> to get hired in this industry or even just for yourself to learn how to do this for family videos. And so, yes, the way you can often learn is by uh, observing. So if you uh, turn the sound off, that is a great way because we have the audio and the video and they kind of blend in our minds. But if you want to see how something might look visually interesting, get examples of seeing commercials, music videos, TV shows without the sound, and then you'll only, your mind will have a full focus on the visuals of it because this whole editing of it is it's it's a technical thing but it, to some degree it's also an artistic thing about when do i cut you know I, I saw on the audio right here well this looks like a good place to cut but when i then couple it with my with my visuals i might want to cut it slightly sooner because my mouth is moving in a way that i i don't want to show so it takes practice to know <coughs> It takes practice to know when to add your text, how long to display something, when to make a cut. It's got a dual camera, as you can see here, two lenses to capture three-dimensional Let me just finish my thought here. So um, the, the editing process, in big Hollywood movies, there's the writer, there's the director, there's the editor. And the editor is one of the last people that has their hands on the film because when a when a movie is a big Hollywood movie is recorded, they often record a lot more than what will appear on the screens. You know, they might shoot three hours of video, but they're going to make a ninety-minute movie, so a lot ends up on the cutting room floor. And that's the editor, and often with the director doing this, sitting together and say, "Let's cut it here. Let's cut it here. This doesn't make sense. Let's cut it here. Let's add another clip." 
So editing is is its own thing. It's its own Academy Award, not the big famous one like Best Actor, Best Actress, and such. But it's an award in editing. We've been working so far with one file, which I have now split into three clips. One file has been cut three times, three clips. Well, up on our project assets, I've only got one clip. If I wanted to add another bit of video, we do the same thing with add media, and then go, go get the file, or go import it from the camera. Once it's in our project assets screen here, I just drop it into where I want it. So when I grab it from here and drop it here, it's going to be part of my main video. Let's say I wanted to rearrange things for some reason. Let's say I want to make a split here and here, mm -hmm. and maybe I wanted to say this later. Once something is split, I can just click it and drag it and put it over here. I have to then close the gap there. But now, I was saying something, whatever I said, I split it and I moved it to the end. Probably did not make sense at all. But you're able to do that. Maybe I was saying something and it, it was better to say later. I can split it and move it. <coughs> so just out of curiosity, how does that look? National photos. Uh, an amazing new bit of technology. And over here at the end. The screen is in... Yeah, so you can... Make your make your cuts and then rearrange the videos. Here's another part that I see perhaps I need to cut out because here it's kind of empty, but I'll also play the sound to confirm. It's highly recommended. So there's those parts there that are I don't really need. So um, I would move my playhead to find maybe right there. Split it. I start to move my hand over here, split that, and then delete that. So this week I Now that was close enough that I might not need to add a transition. See how it goes from there to there. My hand moved like half an inch. But here's the thing about video editing. We are, or any kind of creative thing, we are often our own harshest critics. We see all of the imperfections, all the flaws, all the mistakes, and they stick with us. If you were what, if you were showing this to someone, I guarantee you they would not have any problem at all with this changing from this, and it doesn't match up perfectly, because we're used to uh, seeing video that does jump from this to that. It doesn't have to be perfectly blend. It doesn't blend it. It doesn't have to be completely smooth from here to here to here to here. So this, this that I'm doing here, I'm not going to stress it. I'm not going so to go in and add a little animation to highly it. Highly recommended. It is right there. It happens so this in a week fraction of a second that no one's going to pause it and rewind it and say, look at this mistake. They're just going to go on and proceed with the rest of the video. So... Splitting the clips and all of that is one possible video edit. Here's some more things we can do. We see that, for example, in my case, this particular clip, uh, it's got a video component and an audio component to it. You see there's a little yellow line um, on each of these. On the audio, this yellow line represents the sound volume. If I drag it up, I'm making my sound louder. If I drag it down, I'm making it softer all the way down to silent. <coughs> so if I drag it all the way down, what happens is this. The photos. Silent. There's nothing there. I had audio here. Two lenses to capture three-dimensional photos. And I moved it all the way down. It's completely so uh, soft. The opposite, I can move it up. Capture three-dimensional photos. Uh, an amazing new bit of technology with so it's louder now it, it again it doesn't uh, completely fix everything if I'm whispering in the scene I won't be able to really raise it all the way up so based on uh, the original recording you have the ability to raise it or lower it 
Yep. If you put your mouse on the line, it should turn into a double-headed arrow, and then you can click and drag it up and down. Now, I, have, I seem to have that line also on the video. Is that going to make my video louder or softer? <clears throat> no, that's about fading in, fading out. When you bring it down here, now it's only 20% visible, so oh, I've... Uh, an amazing new the video. bit of technology which uh, rep that doesn't have too much use but you have that ability right there you can fade it out now the point of that is we have all of these tracks video 3 to 1 and I've only got my video on one of them I can do this I can move one clip to a track above another clip so what we'll, what we'll display is from top to bottom. It's going to display this clip. As I play it, it's going to display this clip. But then it's going to display this clip on top of it, and both sounds will blend. So watch this. Uh, an amazing new bit of technology which uh, repels oil. This phone gives you the best saturation. all of the features yeah. that you need. <coughs> What, what am I doing here? I've got one video on top of another. Both of the audios, uh, audio files blend in. Well, what I could do for creativity, um, this one video that I have uh, on top of that other video, I can select it here and grab the corner to shrink it, and then I can create a picture-in-picture -picture effect. This is pretty interesting and complex, but I'm using two video tracks. I moved one of the clips on top of another clip. Once I put one clip on top of the other, I selected it up here, and then I dragged the corner to shrink it. So now I've got picture in picture. It, it will be playing both audio. Bit of technology which uh, repels oil. This phone and gives you the best saturation. Which doesn't make sense, but I could turn the volume off on one. Bit of technology which uh, repels oil and gives you the best saturation in your images. So I could have a picture in picture effect, different layers, different tracks of content. Yeah. Can you do one of those live? No. Um, me, uh, Premiere and most video editing software is is about uh, pre-recorded video that you that you blend together. Uh, you might be thinking of a, like a streaming and such, and we'll cover that a little bit uh, next week. But all of this is, is assumed that the videos already exist. You can, however, turn on your web camera, if you've got a web camera, and record something right now and put it into the project. But it's not that, it's not that this is a place where something live will happen and this is recorded. You'll need your pieces already and it, it's pre-recorded. So when you stack the video tracks, it defaults to the topmost. The topmost, so it doesn't. Um, I've seen where they'll do a background one over the other. It doesn't. It doesn't layer them. It just. It, it just defaults to the one above. No, they are layered, and they're and they're above. Uh, what do you mean specifically about background? Like, what do you mean you've seen? Well, like you'd have a per you'd have a scene of uh, the beach, mm -hmm. and then you have a guy standing, yapping about something, and you put him. Oh, you have the beach in the background and him talking, not like I don't mean like green screen kind of thing. I mean, this is where I've seen like Final Cut does. Actually, doesn't Final Cut actually layer the two video tracks? <coughs> Like so, then it's a cutout. Like I would cut myself. I would cut out the curtains there, but only have myself. Yeah, maybe I guess. I don't, I don't know. I thought I saw it. Well, this is that concept, to my knowledge. The way you're describing it, I have a video on top of a video. There's a background on top of another. Yeah. It's stacked. It's it is layered. That's what it sounds like you're talking about. But maybe. On, on the route of green screen, we do have that ability here, and we do have masking also, where you can cut out. Like, I don't need to show my curtains here. So, um, there it does have a lot of features. Sometimes you just have to play around and go to different things like tools and such, and you'll probably find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So, then 
Yes. Getting pretty advanced Which, there. Uh, repels oil so and gives you the best video, saturation in, in your images. What we can also do is. We can select a clip. So you see, I clicked it to highlight it. I've selected it, and we can do various adjustments to the video. This is when now these icons on the right side will be useful. So I'm going to select one of the clips. If I go to adjust, I get all of these things on the side here. I get a shake reduction. So if my hands were moving a little bit when I was recording, I can somewhat fix the shake reduction. Although it's not like a magic wand that it'll do it. It may give you good results or not. We have Smart Fix and Auto Smart Tone, so it, it will try to detect if what improvements can be made, and it'll do it for you. And I usually don't trust them very well because it's it's a it's the computer trying to figure out what's a good shot, which I I, I kind of don't trust that. So I would recommend instead you have your adjustments here of color uh, and gamma correction. I've got a few here that are cut off. But then I've got lighting, temperature, volume, balance. So I, I can't see them all at once. But let's say I'll show a few. Let's say with color. So I open that up. Oh, there it is. OK, so color. Um, auto color, again, we'll try to kind of fix the video a little bit. It made it darker, in my case, a little bit more contrasty. I can then reset it or undo it. So you see that auto color, it um, did that. I can start to change my color in a lot of weird ways this way. I have more, which then I have sliders for me to exactly deal with this. these things. Make it lighter, make the color more saturated, more vibrant, even change the color. So then there I am in the next Marvel movie. And so now that Corolla changes like that. The G5. The case is an aluminum magnet. And I have this way that I like here, lightness, saturation, vibrance. I have like a, a, a quick visual representation of what would happen if I increase or decrease a certain direction. This is the same thing as the sliders, but then you say, okay, in, in saturation, you know, starting from here or going here or going back here, now it's looking too faded out, but here looks good. And so now it shows here that in the adjustments, there's a little green dot. I have made an adjustment to this clip. If I go to another clip, it doesn't have the, the dots because I have not made changes. But on this one, I've made a change. I've made a color change, which I can turn on and off. Let's say I go to lighting, and here's another way where I can change the brightness, the contrast, the exposure. So sometimes what happens is you might need to change the, the temperature or the tint. That's when, remember on the TVs, well, the, the picture's too green. So you have to go over to the setting uh, on your TV to make the skin tone correct. You've got here temperature and tint. So you get a way to get a way here to try to fix that.
Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. So at this point here, I'm Victor. I say my name and what's often common in, in, in videos is people's names or other text appears on screen. So let's look at adding some text to the project. Victor, I have a question. Before you go further, is, I noticed that you made an adjustment to one clip. Could you make an adjustment to all of the clips at the same time? Let's see here. So I believe there is a way to apply it to everything. I have to find the, I have to find the button. But here, here's the thing. Right now, since we're just kind of exploring different things, yes, I've got four different clips, and I would have to adjust them all. Well, I would want to do those adjustments early on. Before I start to split the clips, I brighten them all up. I fix the contrast, because then they will all inherit those changes. The problem here is that I made a bunch of splits, a bunch of clips. They're not connected to each other, so one set of changes doesn't apply to the other. I want to do them all first and then start to split. But I believe there's a way to apply them all. Yeah, there's a select all under edit. Yeah, but that only selects all. Um, that only selects all. Now, to apply it, when I go over here, it says multiple clips selected. Please select only one clip. So it does let you select all, but not adjust all at once, unfortunately. But I believe there's a way to copy the effect and paste it onto the others. But really, the better answer is uh, make your make your changes like that before you make any splits so that they all inherit the same changes. On text, let's say uh, I need to find the part of the clip where I start to say my name. Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. So at approximately four seconds or so right here. At approximately four seconds right here, I see that. I'm Victor. So I want to say my name right there at about 3.25. So I've got a text, text menu, new text, default text. I have these different kinds of text. I can do like um, at the end there, uh, default crawl, default roll. Uh, that's text scrolling across the screen like at the end of a movie. Oftentimes you'll want to use the default text where at this moment here, some text will appear. When I click on that, the screen will change. I'll have a new track title, and then I'll see some adjustments on the side. <coughs> so this text, in my case, is going to be visible from here all the way to here. Which I, I might not want. Also, it's not in the right place. So I can use the icon down here to move it into the right place. I can go back to edit it here. So I want to put my name. I can align it automatically on the screen. So if I have it over here somewhere, I can click this one, align horizontally, align vertically. Sorry, where were you getting the, uh, how are you getting that, uh, with the, uh, the handles on it? When you switch over here to this. Oh, to the arrow, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I put my text there, and then I've got all of the fonts that are installed in my computer I have access to and change their size. I can click on that little color palette, change colors. Now, the problem here is that. If I put texts like somewhere here, there's parts of the text that are visible, 
like on my skin, and then there are parts that are not visible, like in the dark curtain. So when you see people's names in a movie or TV show, what, uh, how do they handle that? Have you ever noticed? How do they handle having text that might be visible in parts of the video and not others? You might put a background behind the text. You might put an effect, because under here it's kind of hidden, but under colors, we can add a drop shadow. So if I have white and then drop shadow, now I might stand out a little bit right there. So the text that is white on the white background normally wouldn't be visible, but when I added the the drop shadow, now it's got a shadow around it, a little halo, so I can see the text on top of the visuals. So in this case, Tuesday, I'm Victor. This is the show where I review something cool. I might not want to show my name that long. At the moment, this is five seconds. You can tell how long your clips are when you click on them. You'll get a little pop-up duration, six seconds. Um, when I said earlier, we are our own harshest critics, there's an opposite side to that as well in that we we know every cut that we made it's in our mind we that's a mistake i don't like how my hand was here then it was here again we're too we're too hard on ourselves it's it's not going to be you're not going to be scrutinized that much so don't worry about that but on the opposite side of it we have this blind spot in that we in our minds the the video plays in our minds which is different than what actually plays i see that my name is going to appear there but it's too long. It takes too much time. Tuesday. It's, it's visible too long. This is the show or where the text is not visible cool enough. I see people Tuesday. do this all the time, that they put text this on the screen that they expect people to read, and it disappears in two seconds, and a person needed eight seconds to read it. So what I'm saying there is, this is the part where you watch it, you rewatch it, you play it with sound, without sound. This is the part that's a little bit of practice and and you get better at it as you do it. How long should the text appear? How long should that video appear? There's no easy answer to say on that, but in my case, as I play this, my name is there way too long. Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is the show where I review some... I don't want to show my name further than that, so I can kind of see at this point when I'm starting to change what I'm talking about. I only want this clip that long. Now, I have two ways to do this. I can select the the text clip and then split it and then delete it. Well, that takes too long. Another way to do it is you can just drag the end of a clip to shorten it to where you want it. Or extend it again. You can grab an edge of any clip, not just text, but you can shorten it or stretch it. Question? How did you get the text where you wanted it again on the screen? What you have to do is you have to switch over. You have a tool down here. You have to switch over to this pointer, this arrow, and then you can move it exactly where you want. So now what I see is my text appears for a certain time. Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is the show where I re And then when I continue talking, that disappears. I review something cool every Tuesday. This week what I've got for you is the Motorola G5. The case is an aluminum magnesium uh, metal, which really resists... I can have as many text tracks as I want video tracks, audio tracks, etc. So maybe at another par point I also want the text, some other text to appear. Let's see anywhere else. Amazing new bit of tech for the Tech Review Tuesday. The G5 from AT&T. This has been Victor. So there's another place right here.
Now I'm using I'm I'm used to the software, so I like the keyboard shortcuts a lot. Do you see that I'm zooming in and zooming out? Well, on the keyboard, when you press plus and minus at the number rows at the top, you've got number one through through zero, right? Then you've got backspace minus and plus. Let you zoom in wherever your playhead is at. That's where you're going to zoom in and zoom out. I do that all the time because instead of going to my mouse and clicking here and clicking here. It's very useful to plus and minus to zoom in where I need to make changes. Also, if you hit backslash, which is right below backspace, that zooms you out all the way to see the full video. Not slash, which is next to shift with the question mark. This is backslash below the backspace. And actually, that backslash zooms you out all the way or zooms you back into your last zoom. minus and plus or backslash. So I've zoomed in to see here and then spacebar to play. This has been Victor. Now you still need to use the arrow the mouse to kind of jump between the timeline. This has been Victor. <coughs> so instead of sliding you can click where you want it to go to and it goes there. This has been Victor. You can use the arrow keys to go back one frame at a time and find exactly where you need to be at. You hold it down, it goes faster. But using the arrow keys, I can find the exact fraction of a second where I want to add my text or split or whatever. Split clip is a keyboard shortcut also. So instead of clicking that, that little scissor, wherever you have your playhead, you can control K for split clip. And with the control K, oops, with control K, I've split the clip. And then I move my arrows over here with the, I mean, the playhead with my arrow key right there, another control K. Click on that backspace deletes it and closes the gap. Undo. <coughs> and for the music background? We'll do music in one moment. So because I created text, it's now part of my project assets. It's a reusable clip. I want to show my name again with the exact same size and placement and everything, well, it added itself to the assets, so then I just drag it where I want it. From AT&T. This has been Victor for the Tech Review Tuesday. See you. So here's another case. Maybe I only want to show the text for a certain time. case is an aluminum technology which uh, repels oil and gives you the best session. Okay, so when we, when we deal with music, we have some music clips built in. Now that I have my sound, I can go over here and maybe check these out. way too dramatic. So you have some built-in sounds here, music scores, 
sound effects. Let's see here, something in country. What else? Uh, urban. Okay, well, uh, let's say we've got 40 sounds in here. That might not still be enough. I'll show you in a moment uh, how to uh, access a great sound library with a lot of great examples of music. But before that, if I wanted to use one of these sounds that's built in, remember we've got these tracks, voice and music. So into the music track, Uh, I'll go with a much more calm one. Uh, atmospheric. Okay, that'll be fine. So you can grab it and then drop it into your music track. Now it has to download it first. It just gives you a preview of it and then it'll download the, the sound. Um, if you needed a separate track, you can put more voice there. <clears throat> so, usually this audio is connected already with your video, but if you wanted separate voice, you have another track. So, for example, you were doing narration. So, I added this sound here, and <clears throat> now... Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Vic. Too loud. So I have the ability here when I add it. How? This is a music comp with the software. Yes. If you want to add up a song that is known as software as copyright. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. This has a sound also, so I can slide that down if it's too loud. This is a show where I review something cool every Tuesday. This week what I've got for you is the Motorola G5. So I can turn it off for a moment to compare. The case is an aluminum mag... I can turn it back on, right-click enable. Magnesium... Uh, metal, which really resists scratches. So, same as sound line, the yellow line on the track I imported. Say that again. The yellow line is not on the track that I imported under music. Okay, if you don't see it, it might be hidden. You see here, sometimes these tracks are minimized so that you don't see everything. You want to click the triangle, and then it'll open up to show you the extra okay, editing features. And fingerprints. TNT. This so in, in my case here, the sound then goes on and on and on forever for some reason. So obviously all I need to do is just drag that back so that it ends at the point where my sound, where my video ends. Next time. Are you turn on the audio for our computers? Uh, they, uh, we don't have them turned on on purpose because then someone's going to play their audio and someone else is going to make it louder and then someone else will make it louder. So uh, we, um, we might have headphones. I'll check if we've got headphones for the class, but if, if you don't have, basically you need headphones. But I'll check if we've got headphones at, at, right after the break. So... If, the, if your audio is off the screen, how do you get to the end of the short? Press the backslash key on the keyboard, which is right below backspace. That should zoom you out far enough so that you see everything, and then you'll be able to shorten it. Okay, so this is <coughs> these are sounds that are built in, but we want to use sound that... Um, 
maybe we got off of our own our own computer. So let me make a few notes here and then I'll show you how to add your own sound. Regarding sound. Let me say it like this. Don't steal music. Now, what's happening here, stealing music is, I'm not going to steal this music. I have this CD. I'm going to copy the sound onto my project. I bought the CD. I'm not stealing it. No, you're still stealing it. Because music has is a copyrighted asset. Uh, someone created it, published it, sold it. And when you bought it, you only bought the license to listen to it on the CD or the MP3, iTunes, whatever. You didn't pay to use the sound in any other way. Do you ever notice, like if you're watching sports, especially uh, football, it says, you know, uh, there's like credits somewhere at the beginning or end of it that says, you know, broadcast of this is only intended for personal use or, or not for rebroadcast. Well, you watching that game is technically saying you're not supposed to show it at your bar. You're not supposed to show it, uh, you know, at the family picnic. It's for you to look at it yourself at your own home, technically. Now, no one knows that or, or, or cares or adheres to it. But what's more important here, when you're working with, with video and you upload it to YouTube, if you copy your favorite Beatles song into the music, into the project here, and then upload it to YouTube, YouTube will know you use the copyrighted music and your video will be removed. YouTube has the capability to scan all of the videos that get uploaded to YouTube, and it knows that this song is this famous song, you didn't pay for that famous song, your, your video gets removed. You do that enough times, they shut down your account. You're a frequent copyright violator, so they remove you from YouTube. So just because you paid for the CD, the iTunes subscription, <laughs> Pandora, whatever, etc., does not mean you paid for the right or the license to use it for non-personal reasons. YouTube can scan a video and determine if it's copyrighted. Best case, that part of the video is silenced out. This has happened to me one time. So I, I, I like to, um, I've been able to go to Comic-Con and I like to record what's going on and upload it to YouTube. Well, one time I was walking by one of the booths and they were playing some music, which I didn't pay attention to. But when I uploaded it to YouTube, I got an email from YouTube saying, your video was silenced between one minute and, and five minutes because it played a copyrighted sound. So if someone's watching my video and suddenly it goes completely silent because a copyrighted sound was in, uh, was in the video. So it might automatically silence it for you. Another scenario could be your video is removed. So that video that I worked really hard on and I really synchronized that Metallica song to it really well, it gets removed. Okay, that's a not so good scenario. Worst case, you are expelled from YouTube. Your account is shut down, and you cannot create another account with that same email. You cannot upload anything. All of the videos that were previously there get deleted, and um, it's a, a worst case scenario. Yeah. But there's all kinds of stuff on YouTube with copyrighted audio. I mean, Practically any band or any song, somebody's created some kind of slideshow or a still frame of music in the background. And I, I know I had one of my videos pulled down, and, and but I don't understand how other people are doing it. I mean, this matters most when it's a commercial video. When you're uploading a video for your company, your product, for a commercial purpose, that's when it matters the most. 
and that's when it's the most severe. When you're uploading, I, I did my own cover version of, um, of that Frank Sinatra standard. That might not get me into trouble, because it's just for me having fun showing off me singing. But when I then record my own version of the Frank, Frank Sinatra song and put it on my commercial for my product, that's when that stuff happens. <clears throat> Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes this, however, is not as black and white as I'm making it out to be. I'm talking about scare tactics right now yeah, to okay. have everyone on the right track. Now, things do fall, things do fall through the cracks. Maybe I, I do violate copyrights and all of that, and nothing ever happens, and I got lucky. And then maybe something happens next week or next year. You never know. It's better to err on the side of caution with all of this copyrighted stuff because you never know. If you pay YouTube. If you pay YouTube, nope, you have to pay the original licensor and that'll often be hundreds or thousands of dollars to use their song even for like 30 seconds. So so on one video I had emailed the, the songwriter and mm -hmm. asked for permission to use it and they gave me permission to use it out. Good. And then I used their name, music by so and so mm -hmm. at the end of my video. Crediting it. Does that yeah. comply with the rules? That does. That does now. Most likely, you'll still get the email saying, you're using copyrighted material. So then there's a button that says, appeal the claim. Okay. You follow those steps and you say, here's my proof. You know, I put it in the video, here's the email from the person, then someone will review it eventually, and then say, okay, you're fine. But most of these social networks that we've talked about is uh, guilty until proven innocent. If I steal something on Twitter, I, I get shut down and it's hard to then get get back. YouTube is the same thing. So many millions of people use it and so much content that they'd rather like, you know, shut it down or silence it or whatever. Then if you do try to appeal it and you are in the right, you will eventually get put into the right, but it might not be right away because it's just uh, such a so backlog. it's not enough to just give credit to the author at the end. You'd have to have, be able to prove that you got permission from the author. Yeah. You're a small guy, so they don't want to go after you. No, they if you're selling in Chanel. Yeah. No, they went <laughs> you never know. It's very inconsistent, unfortunately. It would sound like, well, I'm small, they won't care. Now, uh, I have, a, um, I have a, 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 a tax accountant friend, and he said, uh, people think, well, I'm going to cheat on my taxes. They're not going to get me. They're going to go after the big corporations. And he said, no, the IRS is going to go after the low-hanging fruit first, and you're the low-hanging fruit. So I don't doubt that maybe uh, for some of us that we're, we're, we're the little people, yeah, they will go after us very easily compared to someone that has lawyers. So you never know, so that's why I do want to say it early on in the most scary way, don't do it, just to not get into the trouble. There are nuances which we'll cover, but I'll cover how to do it properly in a moment. Question? Um, is this like when you apply intellectual property, or like if you have a video where you have a guitar that you bought, do you have to get permission from the guitar company? It's not intellectual property, it's just a physical thing. Well, uh, uh, maybe in terms of here's you know a Gibson guitar that I bought. Am I reviewing it? Am I selling it in my store? What am I doing with it? If I'm just holding it and playing it, but I'm playing a completely original song, well, that's one matter. I don't have to credit that I've got a Gibson guitar. But perhaps if I'm reviewing it or selling it, I might. But then that gets into the issues of fair use and all of those other things, so it's a big old thing. You really, it applies mostly to the you know, visual and audio things, like a, a, a famous photo, famous mm -hmm. audio. That's mostly when it has to, that's when you deal with that. Yeah. Is there a period of time when there's a whole uh, there's a whole laws of, of public domain and all of that. Um, I don't know the exact details, but they're very wide. It is uh, at least the lifespan of the original creator plus yeah, like another fifty or seventy years, something like that. So Mickey Mouse was about to become public domain in the eighties, uh, and the Disney lawyers. Uh, went into a court case and then they extended copyrights for like another 50 years or something. So um, that's good and bad for everyone in terms of, okay, here's my idea, I want, it's my idea, I want to lock it down, it's my idea. So for, for that, yeah, I want it to be locked up for 200 years. 
But then for other people, it's like, well, I want to build on top of that and make something new and make something out of it that might be restrictive. So that's a whole big topic about copyrights. Uh, but the, the whole thing about this, OK, I say don't steal, but also I would say I would recommend use original content. Use create original content. We cannot always do this. But this then is, if a client is hiring my company, we are going to adhere to this 100% always. We're going to create original content, and we will not steal content. Someone is hiring us to make a video. We're going to create original music, and we're going to create original videos. We're not going to go off on, on Google and go find a cool sound or a, a cool video, because we don't want the client to be in trouble for what we did to borrow, aka steal, someone else's content. Uh, we're not always able to do this ourselves. I want to really use a photo of the Eiffel Tower. I'm not going to uh, fly to Paris to take a photo. I'm going to try to get, however, then public domain, or use public domain, aka copyright free, aka stock images, royalty free, a lot of terms for the same thing, which are things that were created and published out there that are OK for you to use. Someone might have created a great photo of the Eiffel Tower and put it out there for free, and it's copyright free, and it's noted as such. And great, use it. Some people might put out content, but then say, you can use it for whatever you want, but make sure you credit me. Other people might say, you can use this however you want, except for commercial purposes. So you want to always check the license. Yeah. Everything. Images, video, uh, photos, yeah. Can you Audio. Tell us how to upload on your own? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very soon. What is a is the song can be public domain? Songs can be public domain too. All of the classical music, Mozart, Beethoven, List, all of that. All all of those people lived hundreds of years ago and their copyrights expired before the latest copyright laws. So all of those famous classical music, that's why you hear that so many times in movies and TV shows, that's copyrighted. It's totally free to use. The gray area about it is technically the music is copyright free, but the recorded performances are not. So if you take this performance from the London Philharmonic that was recorded last week, that might not be copyright free. It's based on copyright free music, but the performance is copyrighted. That's a whole other thing. So I'm going to show you then places and ways for you to get this stuff to be safe with. Free images. Pixabay.com. There's many of them out there. I'll just mention a couple. Free sound. The free music archive. Org, I believe. So here you won't find you know every single sound or every single type of photo, but you will find hundreds and enough of hundreds or dozens of them to hopefully satisfy what you need. I need a cool, uh, happy sound to play in my video. The ones that are built into Premiere are not good enough. So I'll go to the Free Music Archive and browse around in there and find music that someone put out there that fits what I need, and then I can use it in my project. I need a photo of some cupcakes. Uh, I'm not going to go to Google or Yahoo or Bing and search. I'm going to go to Pixabay, and I'm not going to get 2 million results of cupcakes like I would on Google. I'm only going to get 70. But out of those 70, I hope to find one that fits in with my project. Yes? Do you know a place for free video? Yes. Um, what's that one called? Um, what's it called? I have to make a note and look it up. I'll look it up. But here's another one. Other free stuff. <coughs> Archive.org. They also have a collection of audio, I believe also video and pictures archive.org but there's another one that I'm blanking on at the moment that focuses on free video I have to uh, check my email but those are some places to start off with what's that? Pixabay has videos too oh okay good photos and video at Pixabay
so I bring these up in case you need to use stuff that already exists but really uh, you want to be creating your own content if you're gonna get serious about it this matters most when it's a commercial video this matters most when you want to monetize your channel YouTube is one of the the few social networks that you can make money off of it every other social network you can pay to get more people to see your tweets your pins your Facebook posts you can do that on YouTube also that you can pay YouTube to show your video to more people but it's also one of the few networks that if you if you activate the feature and we'll cover that next week you can make money off of people watching your YouTube channel <coughs> And we'll cover all of that next time. But that will not work if you're using copyrighted content. So here's when you want to have your own original content or use the royalty-free public domain stuff that I note here. Victor, I was thinking about uh, something like a newsreel where would you find newsreels that you can use? You can get those mostly from like, for example, the Library of Congress and um, other sort of like news organizations, the BBC archive and such. So uh, I would go to those sites and they have that stuff, <coughs> that stuff archived. It is one of the only networks for you to make money. Okay, so as for getting your own sound into this, we'll do it in a moment. But I also want to mention, also, YouTube has its own great extensive collection of free music. In most of the projects that I work with for personal or for clients, I get them from here. YouTube is constantly adding a lot of music in a variety of styles and they're all perfectly legal for you to use on YouTube. I'll show you where to get that in a moment right after the break. But after the break, uh, we're going to get a sound and put it into our project and I'm going to show you on YouTube where to get that music. And I really recommend it because I've found so many great music tracks to use in our projects. It's not going to be the famous music from the famous artists, but it's going to be similar music in those in those genres with voice or, or just instrumental. So we'll do that after our, our break. Question. Going back to the text, do you have a way to do like a pop-up bubble? Like this, like to appear like a pop-up or to have the shape around it? It's going to be in here somewhere. It's kind of a little advanced. You have to attach an effect to it, I believe. Somewhere around here. Yeah, off the top of my head, I don't remember how to do it, but it's going to be in here somewhere, adding an effect to the text. Uh, maybe up on the text. Is that like a word bubble? Yeah, word bubble. It's in here somewhere. There's so many things to do. It's going to be in here somewhere. We'll look for it in a moment, but it's probably an effect or somewhere under the text option. All right, let's take one more break. When we come back, we'll, uh, we'll look at the audio aspect of things. And then once the video is, is complete, well, we need to export it so it can be uploaded into YouTube. Right now, it's still a project, a work in, pro a work in, pro in process. Uh, so. We'll uh, come back at um, 12.30, and then we'll go on. <laughs>